Hi guys, Mal here again. Um, was heavily focusing on improving the output of the circuit, and we definitely achieved that. So the idea behind how this works is we constructed a Super Jewel Ringer 3.0 circuit, um, first invented by Laser Saber or Laser Hacker, and instead of using the power directly, we um, we created a negative resistant RLC circuit and I built this correct valued negative resistor resistance network um, this was an improvement there are a bunch of 30k resistors which was the harmonic frequency needed to uh, keep this thing in resonance and it was a bunch of 30k 5 watt carbon foam resistors all in parallel to reduce the resistance allowing increased current to flow through our circuit and more of the negative resistance effect to take hold and that effect is achieved now by an earth ground connection passing through a cold cathode neon tube and this is a um, more advanced neon tube that is heavily emphasized for the cold cathode effect uh, regular neons still exhibit that effect, but these types exhibit it m a little bit more so. Um, so yeah, we then, we're not using our power directly. We then are tapping it wirelessly with these two yellow coils wound per Tesla patent 336961, I believe. Um, I have that right here that can be displayed. Um, yeah, right here. They're wound exactly per that patent. And that's probably one of the most efficient ways you can wind a coil. Um, right there. So that's exactly how mine's wound. I have two shot key diodes. One coming off here, one coming off here. Tied together in parallel, and then one coming off the center. And we have a big resonant DC capacitor bank to store the power another ceramic capacitor on the coils themselves, the yellow coils, to keep it in resonance. And yeah, basically I was focusing on improving the rapid recharge effect with this thing, focusing on improving the negative resistance and the output. So I'll turn it on and show you what it can do. And also the input power to the circuit passes through a analog amp meter and we have my voltage meter showing you the DC voltage of the circuit. You can take a look around here. Um, there's nothing crazy going on. There's nothing crazy under the desk. This green wire goes to my heater, which is heavily earth grounded. Um, as you see, there's nothing occurring here. Everything's dead. So. And again, to sum it up, the Super Jewel Ringer circuit turns on, but we don't use that power directly. We created a closed circuit with negative resistance, with the correct value of capacitors, resistors. It's a negative resistant RLC circuit. We included that special bulb to emphasize that effect. So that's a closed resonant circuit, and then we tap it wirelessly to avoid detuning it. We're trying to decouple cause from effect. So we're tapping wireless power without trying to put a drain on the source. Uh, these two bar magnets helped really tune the coil. So I'll turn this guy on. And first I will show it running 15 watts worth of LEDs. Uh, there's these LEDs are 5 watts a pop, 15 watts total, 3 in parallel. So again, I'll turn the system on. There's just a simple on switch here. Give you a good look at everything again. And again, this meter is reading the DC voltage that powers up the ringer circuit. The amp meter reads the current flowing into the ringer circuit. I tried putting another analog amp meter in series with the output of the negative from the yellow coils of the ringer, but for some reason the power can't be read on an analog meter, which is very weird. But it can be read on modern digital meters which I found surprising so I'll turn it on 
and that output is just phenomenal now. There's our power consumption. A little over one amp. That's our output. Absolutely phenomenal. Like it that that will blind you to look at. The output is about 60 volts DC at about 2 amps. Um, it can run a motor, no problem. So again, here's our volt, here's our current draw to the circuit, one and a quarter amps, and our voltage from our source is right there. Um, I will then demonstrate now a motor because this is blinding me to look at. I will connect up a motor now. And this guy will take off the table. Torquey too. And you can see the uh, negative resistant neon bulb firing. Wireless power is present in the circuit while we are hyper efficient. The motor gives it off too, which is very interesting. No degradation when this effect occurs. So that's loud, I'm going to shut that off. I'll remove the motor. Um, I also can't leave these bulbs connected too long because they get so hot they feel like they want to melt. Um, yeah, so next I will show an incandescent bulb running off this thing. The incandescent almost wants to pop. Um, you can't have the circuit on when connecting a load because sometimes the capacitors will charge up and blow out your load. So here we go. That is now the output. Oh my god, I can't even look at that. It hurts. That's the input. One and a half amps, a little shy of one and a half amps at 13.18 volts in the input. Um, back up a bit. I'll show you that the wireless power is still present. And uh, something is smoking here. What is smoking? I think it's burning a little bit of the dust off the table, but that is definitely smoking. I have to disconnect that. Damn, I cannot look at that. Next, I will show you dead short circuit current on this thing. Um, which I can't leave connected for long because my diodes will melt. And it's about 3 amps. About two to three amps. Christ. Yeah, right there. It's actually almost four amps. Let's try and get all this in frame. So that's the input to the circuit. Voltage input. Dead short circuit current of my uh, yellow pickup coils output. And I can't leave that there too long because my diodes will melt. Almost four amp output. Notice how we still maintain the negative resistance effect because during a dead short the input power drops a little bit. So hopefully you can see that clearly. I can't show that too long because um, I'm going to shut this off for safety. Um, discharge the capacitor. So. I can't leave that dead shorted too long because these diodes here will melt. Those diodes will melt if I leave it dead shorted. Um, now next I will connect a brighter incandescent light bulb up and then demonstrate the rapid recharging effect of batteries with this thing. So. This thing is on again. You can tell it's on by the orange light that fires. We will connect up now a 40 watt incandescent. It'll come on at about 
pretty good intensity. Can't really do much with it. It's more of a hand warmer than a light, but maybe. I know when you first connect it, it gets brighter. The output should be 15 watts. Um, and I could tune that output even higher by sliding this uh, magnet across the coil that across the uh, ferrite rod the coils are wound on and that's a met glass laced type 77 ferrite rod and you can get the output even higher by putting the correct diameter uh, rectangular magnet there and the diameter or the measurements the surface area of the magnet has to be a harmonic of the frequency so I hope that makes sense. Kind of like how an antenna has to be the correct size and shape. And you can easily get online calculators for that. Um, so again, if I leave this disconnected for a few seconds and then reconnect it, it'll be really bright because those capacitors, those DC capacitors build up a good charge. And um, the ideal way to use this circuit, believe it or not, is to not run loads directly. The only reason you run loads directly is when you're tuning the output, when you're tuning the, the uh, wireless coils for maximum output, is when you would be running loads, kind of as a test to see where you're at. So these are my uh, LED lights lit. There's a there's true 15 watts here with these guys. Um, you can just absolutely see that that is insane. Wireless power still present even on weird things, like I can take the earth ground of my DC power supply here and um, this light will light up when I just connect it to it so how weird is that and that's definitely hum coming from my circuit because I shut it off it goes out I turn it on it comes on so somehow this circuit is uh, conjuring up a lot of energy from its surrounding environment and um, that is just so bright you might even see these lights start to smoke I can't keep that connected so next I will move this light I will bring into the frame a really old school um, traditional lead acid battery that's extremely heavy um, I'll shut the circuit off, we'll make our connections, and the cool thing is after you shut the circuit off, you can still run a load for a bit, because these capacitors store such a big charge. Um, so now what I will do is hook up my multimeter and demonstrate the rapid recharging effect. So I think... I will disconnect my lead. Well, no, we won't connect it. The leads are just in the way. Um, I'll just connect these up like this. Might look a little messy, but it still works. Get two wires. I always use the correct colors, red and black. So I will hook up the... Alligators to the meter. And I'll demonstrate the rapid recharge effect where this circuit comes in and has its magical effects. So here is the voltage of our nearly dead 12 volt battery. We are seeing the voltage 12.45 volts. Um, this DC meter is showing the voltage on this traditional battery. The ringer circuit is off. I'm about to turn it on, connect it to this old school lead acid battery and demonstrate the rapid recharging effect. This is where the circuit really shines because like I said, you're not supposed to use this circuit to run loads directly. You will always suffer energy loss and um, be under efficient. So like I said, the right way to use it where it really shines and you get extreme efficiencies out of it to the point where you can have very remarkable power systems. You connect that guy up to uh, a big storage bank of energy, like maybe a battery, a special battery system, especially a battery that can accept a quick charge. I'll turn it on. 
the ringer circuitry will take over and rapidly recharge this uh, lead acid battery. And these meters are so annoying. They shut off so quick. There we go. So that is our input to our ringer, the voltage. That is the input current, one and a half amps, a little over. That is the rapid charging effect occurring on our um, DC battery. This thing was nearly completely dead and it's an old school battery. And if you don't believe there's juice there, you'd be very mistaken. There's a lot of juice here. This is what these coils are dumping into that battery at a high frequency very quickly. Um, I can connect it. There we go. So there's the rapid recharging occurring. Wireless power is still present. all around the area. And I'm going to shut this off. And I think I accidentally turned this on. This thing is so annoying. It bumps itself on the back a little bit and always switches on. So we're not using that at all. I don't want that on in the video. So that's off. Um, focusing solely on the ringer circuitry. Uh, just want to move this out of the way a little bit. Yeah, it's fine. So that's quickly recharging. Very fast very fast you see you like that's crazy fast and there's the output that is the output that can rapidly recharge batteries so next I will switch the ringer off I will demonstrate to you the ringer recharging a battery super fast while running an AC inverter so switch the meter off get it out of the way Make sure it's discharged give you a good look at the battery that we were hyper quickly recharging and this can recharge batteries so fast it'll scare you and um, it's from the high frequency of these coils. One's, one coil is putting out power while the other one's kicking out like a uh, boxer, punching left and right really quick. And the capacitors store that charge. So this thing is just kicking out power left, right, left, right, left, right, boom, 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 into uh, what you want to store it in. And the circuit really shines when you store that power. And the high frequency of it makes it so, effic so efficient. So now I will connect up um, my inverter. So what we do now is we get this guy. I have to make some room here. So I'm going to connect up um, one of these special guys. One of these special LIFE P04 supercapacitor hybrids that can accept the charge very rapidly. And um, next, I will demonstrate. Hold on, this is just facing the wrong way and it is really annoying me. It's tough, guys, I'm telling you. Trying to keep up with orders when you work full time, you also do this stuff and you run a farm. But uh, anyway, turning this on. Um, and again, you want to have your inverter switched because when your inverter doesn't have a switch, it'll have a parasitic power draw. So you want to have a switch on your inverter whenever you're recharging a uh, DC power source, like a battery or whatever it may be. So. Um, We'll hook this up. And I think I may be missing the wire I was using to connect light bulbs. Oh, that would suck if I am. Oh, I found it. Okay. So now I can connect light bulbs to right here. 
Anyway, I gotta connect my meter back up again. Every, everything is in the way. Just give me a minute. Kind of doing things on the fly here. I didn't expect to do a video this long, but I'm like, screw it. Why not? I'm sure, you guys can just fast forward a little bit through it. I don't like editing or cutting anything because then people scream fake. All right, so we see our output here. 13.25 volts. I will turn the ringer on. We will connect it up. I can find wherever the, here it is. All right, so now I will connect this up. We will see the rapid recharging effect occur. Here's our rapid recharging effect works on any type of battery the newer the battery technology the better that will rapidly recharge as you're seeing and this is the latest iteration of the uh, coils and the technology that will be on the generator boards the new ones and um, I'm thinking I might even send to all the people who purchase generator boards an even more upgraded model because I, I plan on taking care of these people for life so the people who even ordered previously that had orders shipped out the full generator board I'm thinking I'll send them I'll always send them the most improved model which would just be this circuit with a schematic on how to hook it up it's becoming more and more simple and there's us recharging so again I can just switch my inverter on and like I said the circuit really shines when it can rapidly recharge uh, when it can rapidly recharge a power source and um, you can just basically run you have AC power here now and run whatever you want up to 350 watts so here it is running in incandescent no problem LED bulb no problem you can have up to 350 watts here so we have got uh, power output no problem uh, we are consuming 35 watt output, that's our voltage drop, that's our input to the ringer, there's our amperage. Still have wireless power heavily present. Earth grounding the system makes it an open system and we amplified those exotic effects with the cold cathode bulb, cold cathode neon which looks like he's taking a beating and is uh, for some reason turning black might just be uh, shit from my wood desk that got on him because I know those things are high temp rated so yeah here's our output um, and again this is why you have the manual switch so you, you shut the manual switch to the inverter off and the ringer circuitry takes over and hyper rapidly recharges your uh, DC storage medium which in this case is a uh, Life EP04 battery hybrid and as you see, we're rapidly recharging. Very, very efficient technology. Hyper efficient. And it's only going to keep getting better and better. And I believe 13.3 volts for this guy is a 80% uh, charge for this type of battery technology. I have the chart up here. Yeah, 13.3 would be 80%. So, we can just absolutely rapidly recharge that. And we were running, what was it, 45 watts? I, didn't, I don't even remember. I've had a 12 hour day and can't even remember everything straight, but uh, here we go. 
So anyway, I'll switch the inverter back on. I'm going to demonstrate to you multiple times the uh, charging and recharging of batteries and the correct way to use this technology. Now I will hook up another light. LED, of course, and it doesn't have to be LED. We can hook up anything else we want. Gotta be careful not to get zapped. So we have three lights running. 39 watts. I'm thinking I want to stress the system a little bit. And do another incandescent 40 watt. Well, here we go. Some beautiful light output. We have a rock steady input to our ringer circuit. Still have some wireless power that could be tapped and played with if we wanted. Um, it's just absolutely everywhere around the area, which is very interesting. Not only is the circuitry getting as efficient as possible, the wireless power effects with this when it's on are just mind-bending. We are consuming 72 watts on the output. Um, and keep in mind this is only these guys are only five amp hour sources. They are 14 volt five amp hour life EPO4 supercapacitor battery hybrid devices. Kind of a mouthful. Um I can then shut this off again with the off switch. Demonstrate the very rapid recharging of the uh, power source from the ringer circuit and I believe um, LTO batteries, lithium titanate oxide would probably be even better in theory for more rapid recharging basically a newer battery technology even better than this um, the quicker the batteries can accept a charge the better this technology will work so you're witnessing the rapid recharging effect for yourself hyper efficient Um, recharging pretty damn quick. And again, there's the input to our ringer. Rock steady, 13.15. Consuming 1.6 amps, I believe. So 13.15 volts times 1.6 amps is the input. The output is a little tricky to measure because for some reason the output is high frequency pulsed DC. Um, it can't be read on an analog meter which is very surprising and interesting. But the dead short circuit current can be read on a digital amp meter. But I can't read the short circuit current on an analog amp meter which is very odd. Usually the opposite occurs. You struggle to read this type of power on digital equipment, not analog. So it's very interesting that problem is occurring. But nonetheless, there's significant power output here and you're seeing it do work. So we ran a 72 watt load for like, what, a minute? Um, I haven't done a long video in a while, so screw it. I'll turn the inverter back on again. But when this it runs some loads, might switch out to all incandescents. I just hope the connection, one of the connections here doesn't get a little too hot and melt. I don't think it should, because it's clipped on in parallel. And I'm thinking I want to stress it out and do another incandescent that's only 15 watts, though. I want 40. Uh, I know I got one in my toolbox. At least I should. Do I have one? I might not have one. I gave a few light bulbs away. I had so many. Oh wait, I found one. I believe he's a 40 watt. Yeah, 40 watt. I want you to see that. There we go. So we are have over a hundred watt output. That is our voltage holding. kind of getting nervous. I don't want anything to blow up on me. Make sure nothing's hot here. 
Nope, still not too hot, which is good. Negative resistant network and ringer circuitry holding rock steady at 13.15 on the input. And this godforsaken meter shuts off too quickly. Our output holding steady. That's just our driving circuitry. And again, we are measuring our driving circuitry's input through an analog amp meter and our voltage up here. So no one can complain that we don't have meters on the device. I also would have had meters on the output of the uh, circuit here, but like I said, the power can't be read on an analog amp meter in series with the uh, output of the coil. So here's our output. That's our voltage. I'll back up and just let you really admire it. Forgive the clusterfuck of a workbench. Been uh, working ridiculously a lot lately. Um, to the point where I'll, I look down or if I look at something far away I'll get dizzy from um, just working so much. But uh, anyway, it's fun. Progress is still being made. Engaging all of you guys is advancing this technology, and we wouldn't be here without all you all you guys. So, you all have my deepest thanks, and that's how real science grows: is by engaging with the community, talking with people, and sharing ideas. So, that's our output. We always pass things through an amp, through a uh, watt meter. That is the DC voltage on the battery that's running all this and that battery is hyper quickly recharged from the output of our ringer circuitry so a lot of heat in this area now I can feel heat here and it's a hot night here so that heats you can really feel that heat um, still have strange wireless power effects too that occur like um, I'm standing a little bit of a distance away from the circuitry it's silent, I hear no noise, but yet, look at these weird effects. And they cease when I shut off the ringer circuit. As you see, the wireless power has ceased here. Completely ceased. I turn the uh, ringer circuit back on. wireless power comes back so that's a very interesting effect that can probably be tapped for much more um, much more yield so I shut the ringer off we see that we lose charge a lot quicker the ringer is off as you can see the bulb is not firing anymore the ringer is off we are running this load just directly off the power source the DC power source would know without the rapid recharge effect from the ringer. As you see, it's dropping very quick. Um, our DC voltage went up. Because we're not running the ringer anymore, the ringer's off. These are being run now just from that battery and the inverter, which, was, which would be a traditional way, traditional way how you normally do it. And we're rapidly draining. I'll switch the ringer on. And it fights that. Oh, fuck, I dropped my phone. Anyway, I turned it on and it fights that drain. Lucky nothing shorted out. Then I'll switch the ringer on and off. Off. On. Off. On. So you're seeing that the ringer is definitely having a big impact on these things. Um. So now, I believe that's enough of a demonstration, and this video has gone on long enough. I'll shut the inverter off. These wires are a little warm. We will see the rapid recharging effect take over, and these godforsaken meters shut off way too quick. Rapid recharging effect is being witnessed now from the ringer. And like I said, the newer the battery technology, 
um, the faster they'll recharge in theory and you can get so many cycles out of them where you keep doing that it'll be almost ridiculous so I think you guys get the idea it keeps recharging um, this is also one of my favorite quotes here Your lunch could have been free too. So, we're witnessing the rapid recharging effect. And I have noticed those batteries do get a touch warm with the rapid recharging effect. Because we're rapidly discharging it with the load and then rapidly recharging it. So, that's something to be aware of. And, um, yeah, I think I'll end that vi the video here because I demonstrated the device doing quite a lot of different things. Um, I'll shut it off now. The ringer is off. There's our voltage. And if I left that on there for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, it would go up to 80%. Um... Make sure there's no heat built up. That's cool. Everything is cool to the touch. Slight amount of heat in the capacitors. That's interesting. Um, so yeah, that's the voltage on the DC source that powers the ringer circuitry. That is the charge voltage on the DC source that was being hyper recharged and running the inverter. So that's that. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, uh, support the website. Even if it's not as a paid supporter, we have an archive of free electrical knowledge all compiled in one spot. Kind of like a huge library of ancient uh, electrical engineering knowledge, all from the masters. You can download it for free, view it, schematics for this thing, all free, everything free on how to build all this, do all this. Um, you can also feel free to donate the re to the research, uh, buy some of the tech, I sell some of the kits, bit of a waiting list right now for them, um, insanely busy, insanely busy, like you, it's, it's getting to the point where I might have to hire people soon, like officially, um, so yeah, thank you everybody. Basically gave you the rundown of how it works. Um, yeah, thank you everybody and peace out. We'll see you on the next one.